I've been using the Galaxy SA Plus for a little over three weeks. This is my first Samsung phone since the Galaxy Sentra back in 2013. I didn't have a good experience with this. Does the SA Plus remind me of the Sentra, or has Samsung improved? So before we start this video, I wanted to let you know that on some of the B-roll and just on my phone, you'll see the Tyler Tech background. Uh, in case you want to put it on your phone, I'll leave a link down in the description. Alright, let's get on to the video. So one thing that amazes me about the SA Plus is that Samsung managed to fit a 6.2 inch screen into a phone that is smaller than the Nexus 6P and that has a 5.7 inch screen. They did this by making the screen go the whole way around the sides and almost all the way to the top and the bottom. So they had to take out the home button to do this, but they made the screen so it's pressure sensitive right where the home button used to be. So the screen is a Quad HD Plus Super AMOLED display, and if you've ever seen a Samsung display, you know that they look amazing, and this one isn't any different. So the only thing that could be a problem is that you might have to move your hand up the phone to reach the top to pull down the notifications, or just use two hands. So back to what I said about getting rid of the home button. You might be wondering about where they put the fingerprint sensor. It is not in the screen like they might be doing with the iPhone 8. They moved it to the back, right in the center, the place where you normally rest your finger anyway. Just kidding. That picture's a fake. It's on the back, but it's right next to the camera in the worst possible spot. When I have my finger on the fingerprint sensor, it covers half the camera. I don't get why they couldn't have just put it below the camera like in the picture I made, or even moved the camera to the side like on the iPhone to make room for the fingerprint sensor. This isn't terrible, but it's just something that's annoying. While we're on the back of the phone, I wanted to talk about something that I haven't heard a lot about, but I wanted to mention. It is the heart rate sensor. It's hidden right under the flashlight, and I didn't know about it till a week after I got the phone. It's something that's not normally on a phone, plus you can use it to measure your heart rate, oxygen saturation, and stress levels. The camera is the last thing on the back of the phone. It is the same camera as last year's S7 had, but that's not a bad thing. The only difference is the software the phone uses to capture photos and videos has changed, and that's what makes it better than the S7's camera. This is still one of the best smartphone cameras I've used. This is what the video looks like from the rear-facing camera, and this is what it looks like from the selfie camera. So here are a few pictures from the rear-facing camera showing different situations like low light and outdoor use. I have HDR on for all of these pictures. Something else that's nice about the S8 Plus is actually having a headphone jack. Not only does Samsung give you the headphone jack, but they give you headphones too. Now these aren't $30 headphones like Apple gives you. Wait, did I read that right? Apple charges $30 for those headphones and they don't even stay in your ear? Alright, anyway, Samsung gives you comfortable headphones that are tuned by AKG. They actually stay in your ear and they retail for $99. I thought that was a nice touch. The USB Type-C port gives the phone fast charging on wired, and they also say that it has fast charging on wireless, but I couldn't test that since I don't have a wireless charger. The battery is really good. Um, they didn't try to fit a huge battery in the S8 or S8 Plus to make sure nothing like the Note 7 happened this time. The battery in the S8 is actually smaller than the one from the S7. Um, I'm still able to get about 15 hours of battery from the 3500 mAh battery in the S8 Plus and you can even extend that battery life by using the power saving modes. Time for Bixby. To me, Bixby is like the Note 7 of software. Google Assistant, Alexa, Siri, and Cortana all use voice as the main way to communicate with them. Bixby doesn't yet support voice interaction, and seems like Google now cards, pretty much. Uh, there's also the Google Goggles-like feature, Bixby Vision 2. Uh, I don't think Samsung should have released Bixby until the voice interaction part was ready, uh, but I really don't think they should have a dedicated button to what their version of Google Now Cards is on the phone. I always accidentally press it, and there's even a case on Kickstarter that covers up the Bigsby button. It doesn't look like it will get funded, but the fact that this is a thing shows how much people dislike the Bigsby button. Something more like double tapping the fingerprint sensor to open Bigsby would have been more appropriate in my opinion. Bigsby seems like it was rushed to consumers in my opinion, just like the Note 7, just less fires. Hey, I just want to interrupt uh, the video for a quick second. While I was filming B-roll for this, I 
got the Bigsby update for Bigsby Voice. Um, it actually doesn't really work that well. Uh, I tried asking it what the weather was. It said it wasn't gonna rain. Is it supposed to rain today? No, Sunday it will not rain in Delmont. And it started raining about five minutes later. So Bigsby was wrong, it is raining. And that's why I didn't get the review started till today. I also found out that you have to be really specific with what you ask it. Like, you can't just say, hey Bigsby, play music on Google Play Music. You have to say, hey Bigsby, open Google Play Music and play music. And then it'll bring up the search. So you have to structure how you ask it really specifically. Um, but yeah, Bigsby voice is out now. It's not really good. I still don't think they should have a button for it. Back to the rest of the video. A good part of the S8 Plus is that it's the first phone to have Bluetooth 5.0. There are some videos that explain what it does better, like this one. Leaving stock Android was something I was afraid of. I liked having the developer previews of upcoming Android releases, being the first to get software updates, and having the Google Now experience. So far, I don't really miss the developer previews that much, and if I do, I can put that on my old phone. The software updates haven't been an issue yet, uh, I just hope I don't have to wait for months to get Android O after it's released. And I was even able to install the Google Now Launcher on the S8 Plus because I had it on my 6P. So TouchWiz is now referred to as the Samsung Experience, uh, and it doesn't really change as much stuff with Android as previous versions of TouchWiz did. I can live with the Samsung Experience. I used the S8 Plus for my review, but all of this applies to the S8 II. The only difference is that the Plus has a larger screen and a bigger battery. So I would recommend the S8 or S8 Plus to anyone looking for a more premium Android experience or someone switching to Android from an iPhone. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to get notified when a new video gets uploaded.